anyone of any sexual orientation or any gender is welcome in a cuddle session. You're right, it is platonic. And connecting with all different types of human beings is the thing that makes me the happiest. Hi, my name's Keely. I'm a cuddle therapist, and I've got some tips on how you can make cuddling even better. Before we get into them, the first important thing is you have to communicate. Neither you nor your cuddle partner is ever gonna be a mind reader. So when we talk about this stuff, that's when the good stuff happens. So what could you talk about? Well, you could talk about what type of touch. So like, if you want firm massaging touch, do you want feather touch with light fingertips? What about nails? You can talk about where on your body is really great and where you don't really want. Like for me, I love head scratches, but if you get to my neck, it's too sensitive. Remember, cuddling doesn't have to be something that's done in silence. If you don't like something or if something gets old or if your arm falls asleep, it's okay to adjust, shift, and move so that you're both having an excellent experience. Don't forget to follow and like if you want all the tips I have on how to be an expert cuddle. Yep, it's a great work perk. <laughs> it is awesome. I get to wear pajamas or onesies or just like yoga pants and a t-shirt. That's my work uniform. It's a tax right off. It's amazing. Yeah, that's right. Because of the nature of how consent is defined in the United States, I see clients who are 18 and over. Other practitioners who have specific education in childhood or adolescent brain development or behavior might have a different policy. Yeah, yep, yeah, sure do. I absolutely struggle with imposter syndrome a lot. Uh, I don't have any advice to get rid of it because I still struggle with it frequently. But what I do that helps with it are a couple of things. One, I remember that the reason why I have imposter syndrome is because I care so much about doing a really good job. And that is admirable. Another thing that helps is remembering to externalize the imposter syndrome voice. Remember, I am not my imposter syndrome. And when I look at it and I ask it, what are you telling me? It's normally telling me I'm scared, I'm anxious, or I'm feeling vulnerable. And then I can look at how I can address those three things. So it's a good warning system. And lastly, I try to find a grounded balance between where I have to grow and improve and be vulnerable about that with the knowledge I know, the accomplishments I've made, and where is... First of all, moving and adjusting while cuddling is normal. You do not have to stay in a position while your arm is asleep. Sometimes a slight adjustment can make all the difference. But try to find where their body naturally curves in. For instance, behind the neck, behind the small of the back. 